Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. This time we're going back to 2007 for a film that was directed by Danny Boyle and it was called Sunshine. Now the setting for the story is that in the year 2057 the sun is dying and people on earth are slowly freezing to death as the weather gets colder and colder and they send a spaceship called Icarus 2 with a massive bomb that they hope will reignite the sun and this is the second attempt the first ship Icarus 1 disappeared without a trace seven years before so before we get into it please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss when a video is uploaded with that let's get into it the movie begins with the ship on the way to the sun and we see Dr. Searle who is ship's doctor and psychologist in the solar observation room taking as much sunlight as he can. We see the crew all sitting down to eat and as they're eating the captain tells them that they're about to enter the blackout area and if they want to send a message back to earth this is their last chance. Robert Copper, ship's physicist, takes that opportunity to send a message back home. We see that Captain Canada is doing the same thing that Searle is doing, immersing himself in sunlight. That's where Corazon, who is a ship's biologist, finds him. She assures him that they have enough oxygen to get to the sun. Mace, who's the ship's engineer, gets into a fight with Robert because Robert spent so much time sending his message to Earth that Mace did not get a chance to do his. Searle recommends that Mace spend some time on the simulation deck, which he does, after which he goes and apologizes to Robert. And the Icarus 2 continues on its way. The crew watches as they approach Mercury and watches as it passes in front of the sun. As they enter Mercury's orbit, Harvey, the communications officer, detect signals coming from Icarus 1. And they are able to trace that Icarus 1 is in a close orbit around the sun. So makes a suggestion that they go to Icarus 1 and collect the payload so they would have two payloads just in case. But Mace is against that idea. But the captain leaves it up to Robert who is the physicist. Robert suggests it's a good idea since they've used all of Earth's material to make this bomb and they can't make any more. So going to get the one from Icarus 1 could be a good backup. So they move out of Mercury's orbit and head to the Icarus 1. Suddenly alarms go off and you see that the heat shield seems to be on fire. It seems that Trey, the ship's navigator, when he put in the new coordinates forgot to realign the ship's shields and that caused the heat shields to be damaged so now they have to go out and do a EVA to repair them. Captain Kineda and Robert go out and they find that four panels on the large heat shield was damaged because they had to turn the heat shield so that Robert and Kineda could go on it the communications array was unprotected and it got destroyed when captain canada informs them that they should be able to fix the four damaged panels the crew celebrated light reflected from the communications antenna array causes the oxygen garden and the oxygen reserves to catch fire Corazon rushes to the scene, but all she can do is watch in tears as the oxygen garden goes up in flames. They now have to reorient the heat shield to keep the sunlight from being reflected into the ship, putting Robert and the captain in danger. The captain orders Robert to leave while he stays to repair the final heat shield panel, knowing he will not make it back. And as the captain faces the inferno coming towards him, Searle asks him what he sees because Searle have been spending a lot of time immersing himself in sunlight. The captain is incinerated as the inferno rushes over him. Meanwhile, Robert barely escapes under the heat shield as the inferno rushes over him. 
Meanwhile, Corazon sits and watches the now completely destroyed oxygen garden. Harvey, who is now captain, tells the survivors that they now have no choice. They have to go to Icarus 1 because they no longer have enough oxygen to complete their mission. Corazon, Mace, and Cassie meet and discuss the fact that if three of them was to die, there would be enough oxygen to complete the mission. Cassie then goes to see Robert, who is examining the payload to ensure it is still viable. She tells him that she thinks they're all going to die. The Icarus 2 docks with the Icarus 1, and Copper, Searle, Mace, and Harvey go on board the Icarus 1. Cassie and Corazon stay on board the Icarus 2 to monitor them while Trey is sedated. They split up and go looking. They find that the oxygen garden is overgrown and lush. They find that there's water, but the main computer is down. It's been sabotaged. They were able to retrieve a message from Captain Pinbacker of the Icarus One who claimed that God told him to allow the human species to die. So he abandoned his mission seven years ago. Suddenly the docking airlock on the Icarus One explodes and both ships begin to separate. The only way to get back to the Icarus Two is to jump a course so they found one spacesuit in which they put Robert since he's the physicist and the only one that can operate the bomb and Harvey and Mace wrap themselves in insulation from the ship and Sail stays behind to operate the airlock. They jump across towards the Icarus 2 and Harvey gets knocked off and Robert and Mace made it across while Harvey dies. As they get across and the ships separate, you see Harvey floating off into space. Sail, who stayed behind, goes to the solar observation room and opens up the viewing ports to the full power of the sun and incinerates himself. The survivors meet and speak and they know they only have enough oxygen for four of them if they want to complete their mission. So Mace suggests that they kill Trey and Cassie doesn't agree but Mace goes to do it anyway but when he gets there he sees that Trey is already dead it looks like he killed himself the computer then tells Robert that there's not enough oxygen to complete their mission when Robert said yes there are because there's only four crew members the computer replies that there's five when Robert asks who's the fifth the computer replies unknown and Robert asks where is the fifth and the computer tells him it in the observation room and Robert goes there to see. When Robert gets to the observation room he meets an insane Captain Pinbacker from the Icarus 1 who's come across the Icarus 2 and who thinks that God told him to have humans join God so he intends to stop the Icarus from completing its mission. Pinbecker stabs Robert who runs and gets trapped into the airlock. Corazon is in the remnants of the oxygen garden when she sees a plant growing and she kneels down to look at it when Pinbacker comes up behind her and kills her. Pinbacker disables the master computer and the ship goes dark. Mace gets to the control room, manages to get a few items online. He sees Robert stuck in the airlock. Robert tells him about Pinbacker and Mace heads off to the computer room to try and get a computer back online. Mace managed to get some of the computer systems back online but dies in the process. Robert gets into a spacesuit, blows the airlock, managed to get back into the ship and separate the bomb from the rest of the ship. He sets the engines of the bombs to fire to take it down into the sun. Then he jumps across just before the engines fired. You see the Icarus burning up as it falls into the sun. As the engine is pushing the payload into the sun, Robert finds Cassie. As he's talking to Cassie, Pinbacker comes up behind him, holds him, and begins to choke him. But Cassie gets up and pushes Pinbacker away from him, and he is able to leave and go and begin setting up the bomb. He sets off the bomb, and you see as the bomb goes off and the solar mass comes in 
and he's standing there as he's totally consumed. You finally, you see Robert's sister and her kids in a frozen Australian harbor as the sun finally comes up full strength for the first time. And that's how the movie ends. This was a good movie. It takes a few liberties with the physics, but how the ship operated seems to be fairly accurate. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching and listening. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.